Hello, this is Julian with Julian Tech Reviews, back with another video. And today we're going to talk about the Samsung S24 Ultra in full detail about a month later. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to this channel. We really do appreciate it, and we thank you for your comments and your support. Well, let's get started. So, since this is a month out, let's talk about a couple of numbers here. So when this first came out for pre-order, if you're able to snag the pre-order before uh, the release date, uh, you were able to get $750 off, uh, depending on what type of device you had, in credit. And it started out at $1299 with a free upgrade in the memory. So you got 512 gigs in the pre-order at the bare minimum. I took advantage of the one terabyte during the pre-order, so I got $750 off. Plus, I got the Samsung Galaxy Watch with the $150 credit that they gave you as well for pre-ordering. That's a bonus. But if you didn't, it's okay. You still can get this phone for $1,299 for and get 256 gigs, which is more than enough for you um, if you don't carry all your photos on your phone. So, But let's get started and talk about all the fun things that this phone entails. Well, for starters, it comes with seven colors this time. And this one is the titanium orange. So they have the titanium black. They have the titanium gray, the titanium violet. Titanium yellow, titanium blue, titanium green, and then, of course, the titanium orange. So that's amazing for a flagship to have at least seven uh, color options. Uh, hello, Apple. <laughs> well, once again, let's talk about the body. So the body of this phone, currently it weighs uh, 233 grams or about 8.18 ounces. It has a brand new titanium frame which makes it a little bit lighter on the touch and on the just holding it. However, it's still, you know, heavy, but not as heavy as the previous models due to the new titanium frame. And it's still, you know, IP68 dust and water resistance. So up to one and a half meters in water for about 30 minutes, which is the standard down days. Still comes with the stylus. So you still have the stylus in here, the stylus action. So the color for my titanium orange, I do have a little bit of a tannish brown color. So that is included. Okay, let's talk about the display. So the display is a dynamic LTPO AMOLED, uh, which LTPO means low temperature polycrystalline oxide, which is a fancy way of saying, hey, this is beautiful and it'll be protected. But we'll get to that part later. And it has a uh, 1440 by 3120 pixels, um, which is a 19.5.9 ratio, which in English it's 505 uh, PPI. So you have very nice screen <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it does have a 6.8 inch uh, display and it, and it emits 4,500 nits of brightness. So when you're in the sun, you can actually see your phone and it won't be a huge glare in it. And we'll get to that later. It does have a refresh rate uh, from 1 to 120 hertz. You can set it to where it's adaptive um, refresh rate. High, or you can do a high refresh rate, which I like to keep it on high. All right. So the platform on this is Android 14 or in Samsung's version, uh, One UI 6.1. I have, a, have the latest update on here. I do have T-Mobile, so depending on your model, you may get something early or not, but this is an unlocked phone, so just take that with you. This is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Generation 3, the latest uh, chip. It has a GPU Adreno 750 for you gamers out there with the graphics card. The memory, so I talked about it a little bit earlier. It does have three storage options, so you have the 256 gigs, the 512 and the one terabyte, which I have. Since I took advantage of the pre-order, I figured I'd get the most uh, storage I can get. So I plan on keeping this phone for a long time. And the memory for the RAM is 12 with all three storage options. So no 16. Shouts out to OnePlus. They do have 16 gig and up to 24 gigabytes of RAM. So that's very interesting. All right, let's talk about the main camera. So let's go ahead and turn it over. So the main camera has a 200 megapixel wide camera. It has a 50 megapixel 
periscope telephoto camera with five times optical zoom. It has 10 megapixel photo telephoto camera with three times optical zoom. And lastly, it has a 12 megapixel camera, ultra wide camera uh, as well. And this shoots up to uh, 8K in video, 24 to 34, 30 frames per second. That's amazing. All right. So let's talk about the, the front camera. So the selfie camera has a 12 megapixel front camera. It has shoots up to 4K video at 30 frames per second. It has face unlock, you know, with night escape. So those are the specs on the camera in the selfie. All right, let's talk about battery or charge. So the battery is a 5,000 milliamp battery. So definitely lasts you a couple days. It does have 45 up to 45 wire charging, but OnePlus has up to 180 watt. <laughs> wire charging so just like to throw out there it has up to 15 watt wireless charging and it has a feature of reverse wireless charging up to 4.5 watts not a lot but it's good to have when you're in an emergency and you need some extra juice to give to your partner you have the, the capability of it all right so that's pretty much all the specs of the phone now let's get into unboxing the phone. Well, just like the previous generations and the green initiative, there's pretty much nothing in the phone but the phone box. So let's go ahead and open this. So as you can see, I've already unboxed the unit. Here's the unit. Okay, it comes with uh, the standard book information. It comes with a cord. Uh, which is in here. I like to keep it in here because I have multiple cords. So don't feel like unearthing that. Don't need it at the moment. And then it has a SIM ejector tool. So if you don't have eSIM, which this phone has eSIM capabilities, and you're still using the chip, which I like to use the chip, um, you can use the ejector tool that it comes with. All right. So the next thing I like to do is toss this one over here, put this back together. Every time I open the phone, I like to go to the settings and here's just a few settings that I like to do. First thing I like to do is go to display. So as you can see, I have it in dark mode. It's already default to light mode, but I always do the adaptive brightness and they have a mode here where you can use uh, extra brightness which uses more battery which is a new feature I, I just saw all right let's do motion smooth this no so once again it has on to 120 hertz so it starts out with standard but like i said i like to keep it at adaptive so it will keep your phone moving smoothly i comfort shield um that's in case you want to you know look at this phone all day and all night and it will slowly make it a little bit more I guess yellow for your better eye comfort instead of that blue white light so I'll switch that back and it does have adaptive color turn tone but once again it kind of adjusts the color and the white balance to make it more beautiful for you and your eye okay so screen mode so I like to have this at vivid it comes with natural and you can do uh, more advanced settings and you can adjust the the greens and you can adjust the the reds and the blues and it has a haptic feel whenever you're moving this around which is very nice so i like to keep everything to the top boom all right so let's talk about the screen resolution so it comes standard with FHD plus, but once again, I like to get it to the tippy top. Um, it does have up to 3,100 by uh, 1,440, you know, display here. I want to use all of that, so I'm going to get the sharpest visuals, but it has the most battery use, but hey, I have a 5,000 milliamp battery, so I don't care. So let's go ahead and select that and keep that there. Um, let's see, what else do I do? Okay, navigation bar. So here's one that 
I always update whenever I open up my phone. So it does have the buttons, which it comes in by default, but I like to swipe gestures because I like to be cool and swipe things left and right and move things around instead of having that bulky here and it's just stagnant. So that's just me. Okay, and then let's just talk about system vibration intensity. So it comes in the middle, but as you move it to the side, you can increase the vibration intensity, the touch interactions. You can use it while you're charging, navigation gestures, camera feedback. So when you're snapping a picture, you can feel the haptic vibration feedback, but we're still on display, so we'll get to that later. And I always like to see the charging level, the percentage of the charging. So I like to keep that there. All right, so let's go to the other stuff. So the last thing I would like to do here is just show you, you know, what current version that I have. And I have the latest Android, which is 1.6.1, one UI. And just here's all my information. So the January security patch, don't have the February security patch to make sure everything is up to par when it comes to the security settings here. And let's just look about the phone. So battery information, as you can see, the 5,000 milliamp battery. Uh, it's not charging, and I've been holding this phone all throughout the day, so it's about more than half the day, and I'm still at 80%, which is a testament of this battery as it operates. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the next thing, which is features. Going with the features, the first thing I like to do is look at Samsung's proprietary just creativity feature it is called Good Lock. Now, this doesn't come on the phone, so you're going to have to download it from Samsung's uh, Galaxy Store. So you can go into the Galaxy Store, which is a store. Okay, and then you go into search and then just look for Good Lock. And then boom, there it is. So once you download GoodLock, there are all the features. So I'm sure you're wondering, hey, how did you get all this thing, this theme that is essentially peach all the way down for dark mode? And then also we'll have this customized theme here. And then if you switch to light mode, still have the theme here, still have a orange or kind of a pinkish background. Okay, and then even my keyboard, I have this customized. Well, it's all because of good luck. Then I also have my uh, pull up tabs here for my last use apps. I have it as a vertical as opposed to horizontal side to side. So these are all within the good luck app. So let's go back to the good luck app. So the first thing I did was create a theme. So you can go to and also you have to download each one of these particular features within the Galaxy Store, as I showed you earlier. So this one's called Theme Park. So this is where I get my theme. So once again, you can go in here and you can just change the tone, the color of the theme of your phone. So I chose this theme and they'll give you previews of how it will look after you apply it. And then you can even switch it to light mode, what it would look like after you apply it. I mean, you can switch different colors and you can just play with this thing all day. So we just selected kind of like a turquoise here and then I can select the little turquoise here. And pretty cool. And then once you do that, you can download the new version up here. And then you can uh, apply it as it shows up here. So I've created about four or five themes here. So I already have mine created the one I like. So I'm just going to go back. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is Pentastic. So Pentastic, you can apply various styles to your S Pen. Now, I really didn't mind or didn't care about this feature, but I thought after you know using and playing with it for a while, it does look pretty cool. So as you can see, if I hover over my phone, I have a picture. So this picture shows up every single time I'm getting ready to write. Now, you can update this to anything. You can do a picture of yourself. You can do stickers that they have, but let's just go in here and look. So right now, the pointer 
is what I changed. So you can go basic, you can go hard, you can go all these features here, or you can do custom is what I did. So as you can see, I'm hovering over this and I can get all of these touch with my custom. So you just go into custom, you can select the, how big you want it when it shows up and it automatically works right away. You can go to your gallery. Okay, you can mark over your hover, which you'll have the arrow and the picture, but I just like that. And then you can also make a sound whenever you click. So pretty cool. Every time you tap, you'll have a sound. Let's see. I don't know if you can hear that, but. So let's give an example. So let's go ahead and create some notes. Let's see if we can hear that sound every time we write. Anyways, funny sound, interesting. You can also double tap shortcut. So you can choose what happens when you hold down the pin you double tap uh, this little bubble here on the pin. Pretty cool. All right, so back to good luck. That was pin testing. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is look at this Lockstar. So Lockstar, you can do limited customizations uh, on your lock screen. For instance, if you want to adjust the layout of your music widget you can just kind of move it up and down however you want it or you can cancel it out completely you can add a widget you can add any widget you can add let's say for instance i want to add the best buy widget it's up there okay i want to add uh my calendar widget it's kind of big uh this one so that's on there okay and then Various helpful messages will be shown. Okay, that's going to be there. Okay, and then let's say I want to add Let's say my mail widget So Gmail is going to be there so all these accounts primary box, okay, they're all on here Kind of messy but there we go. Let's go ahead and make that nice. Let's get rid of this Best Buy. I don't want all that information on there. Oops. Let's just start with that. And then we're going to hit save. All right. So this is what it's going to look like whenever I lock it. So let's try it. Let's wake it up. Ah, there it is. So now I have my calendar on the outside. So the default lock screen won't enable you to have all these widgets on here, but if you use the Lockstar in the Good Lock app, you can have it. Okay. That was called Lockstar. I'm going to set it back to default so I won't confuse myself. <laughs> all right, the next thing we can do is the Keys Cafe. So we have a keyboard. You want to make it look like the theme or you want to customize it however you want to. Here are all your options here. So the first thing I did, you can either make your own keyboard as well. I chose not to because I'm not a creative, but the option is there for you. So next thing I did was style my own keyboard. So I have it on and here are the, all the options you can do. And then whatever you, which one of these pre uh, select the ones you can go ahead and apply that but like I said before I already created one you can create a sticker and create a custom sticker set you can have a keyboard game there and then you have all these settings here you can make a longer space bar you can do auto replacement of sensitivity you can turn off the delete accelerator you can double tap in rule for three or three times four keyboards 
use stickers, suggestions, and large review, all these options. This is what I landed on. So nice little theme here. That's during the non-dark mode. And then here's dark mode keyboard. Kind of have a little dark chocolate version of it. Pretty cool. And that's called Keys Cafe within Good Lock. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about is the Navi Star, Navstar. So I have this on, and essentially it changes your navigation, right? So I'll have the transparent hint whenever I'm using my navigation bar. So if I turn it off, actually, let me put it in light mode so you can see it. So when I have it on, the transparent hint, I'm not sure. Look at this area down here. There it expands a little bit, so it makes the navigation bar hint area transparent to make content visible. So if I go ahead and drop it, so if I'm looking at content, I mean it's there, it's slightly visible, but not all the way visible. It's supposed to be transparent. Let's see what it looks like when it's not transparent. Uh, a little bit more solid, I guess. I don't know. Okay, let's go back here. You can also allow the back gesture in full screen. So allow side back gestures in full screen mode, such as games and videos. Uh, if you want to add that, you can enable extra gesture settings. So you can uh, swipe from the bottom. Uh, you can basically customize it however you want to. Okay, let's go to... You can customize the side back gesture indicator. So right now, the background is, you can, it doesn't have any color, but you can add color and you can do all that. Like I said, I'm not creative, but the options are there for you to be creative. You can customize the gesture handle. You can be as creative as you want, or you can, if you like the buttons navigation, you can create your own custom buttons to make it all fun, but I don't use it, so, but it's there. And that's all under Navstar. All right, so another one, let's talk about Home Up. So this is uh, related to the home screen. So this is on. So let's go ahead and look at some of these settings. So obviously you can customize your grid. You can do the home grid screen, and I changed it to five by seven. So I can have more apps in there to make it look more uh, spacious. And as you can see, I have plenty. And then you can go into my folder. And you can see there's about five by seven here. Five by seven. Okay. Okay, you can do your favorites. You can put as many favorites as you want. Up to nine. You can loop pages. You can control the background blur whenever you're looking at your, your layout on the home screen. The background color, which I have turned on. And you can do some background transparencies. And as you can see, whenever one of your folders are popped up, you can either have it as transparent as you want to. Okay. You can also back up the layout. So if you want to, if you switch phones, you can pull Good Luck, Good Lock back up, and then you can go to that particular app within Good Lock, and then you can pull up all your recent settings, which is pretty cool. That's called Home Up. All right, let's talk about Clock Face. So you can configure as many clocks as you want to. So I decided to choose this one. I thought that was pretty cool. So that's on my always on display. Oops. So you can select the clock face. Select it. And you can apply it. And this is what it's going to look like. Pretty cool. However, you can't use the clock face while, oops, sorry. 
can't use the clock face while the lock star is on. So you have to turn on the locks, turn off the lock star. And you can just apply it. And there it is. Boom. So some of these you're going to have to play with. So you're going to have to use either the clock face to change the clock if you like that sort of thing. Or if you want widgets, uh, you just use uh, the other uh, lock star. So interesting. Okay, quick star. It's not on. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So you can style your own quick panel. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So when you pull down your quick panel, you can make it whatever color you want to. Now this may in, embarge on your uh, theme overall. So I would test these things out and make sure that it's within uh, <laughs> the good luck of what you want. Because you have to make some, you know, sacrifices. So I have that turned off. So I don't want to have that issue because I want the full theme to be applied on my entire phone. So, all right, let's talk about edge lighting. So edge lighting is on. So you can set your own custom style. How about that? So when somebody's calling or you get some message that just floats up on the screen, you can make it a specific color. You can add po oh, popcorn. That's great. So I'm adding popcorn. Okay. So it says show app icon instead of custom style image. You can change that. You can double tap to open. You can prevent swipe down. So all of these things. And here's another one. I mean, they have so many options in the Galaxy Store of good luck so I would just definitely take a look at that and choose what's ever best for you I mean you can customize this thing up and down so this is Wonderland you can create 3d motion wallpapers with various effects didn't do that I haven't downloaded as you can see so pretty nice okay so that was just the makeup part now you can go to the life up part there's other things here so once again there's the edge touch you can adjust you can adjust the settings for the touch on edge screens easily. So let's start. So you can allow that. Okay, as you can see, you can do edge zones. And that's what it's going to look like. Or you can do that. You can block zone. So adjust the block zone to prevent un intended touches i mean that's pretty cool but I'm not going to use that this one's called nice catch so you can look into the cause of unexplained actions such as vibrations or the screen turning on so pretty neat you can turn on this you can create you can have your sound history your vibration history ringer mode history you can just get down to the bottom of what happened so nice catch is there to catch all this amazing all these errors which is cool okay you can have a camera assistant so you can customize your own camera settings to your preference um, you can have your zoom already set up here your auto hdr picture softening can be on medium high auto lens switching awesome distortion correction did i have this turned on no it's already selected <laughs> High resolution settings, so you can do adaptive pixels, or you can do upscale digital zoom. Hmm, interesting. You can do a quick tap shutter, prioritize focus over speed, video recording in photo mode. Awesome. Timer multi-photo options. Okay, you can do five pictures and most seven pictures. Quick tap shutter, prioritize focus over speed. Nice. Video recording in photo mode, of course. Timer, long. I mean, just all these camera settings you can set up right here. That's under camera assistant. There's a couple more here. So this is nice shot. So you can use a screenshot and screen recording features uh, more conveniently. So there's a delete button. You can, there's no copying of captured 
images to clear to the clipboard. You provide various selfie video options, and then you can enable do not disturb during screen mode, which you want to have that. All right, and then there's another one called Noti Star. So this is where you can create your entire notifications and you can customize it to however you want to look. Uh, I would suggest downloading that one because if you want to have these organized you know, notifications, you can manage your notification history easily with that. So I'm going to look into that and do that, but I just prefer the basics of life here. So I will take a look at that one. You can update your one-handed operations. So if you like to use one-handed operations, you can use it with your, <laughs> it's, it's just your thumbs, which is awesome. And then routines, if you have any routines, you can create them all right here. Multi-star, this is uh, another one where you can improve your multi-window experience. So you can, you know, you, oh, sorry. You can use the apps easier, you know, on the folder phone. You can uh, ease of use of Samsung Dex. So if you use Samsung Dex, that's great. Uh, you can use multiple apps without pause in multi windows. You can avoid minimizing the pop up view whenever activity changes between apps. You can remove the blur effect in split screen. Okay. And then they have various options there. So that's another uh, one you can do. Okay, and then Sound Assistant, and then Registar. So Registar, you can conveniently configure the settings app and quickly launch useful features. Might be something uh, I can look into, but as you can see, there's a world of knowledge here that somebody can use. And then you can do Sound Assistant. You can expand the audio settings, increase uh, convenience, improved audio related features. Pretty cool. So. Overall, this is, uh, once again, a tool that you can use to customize your Galaxy uh, device, and I think you should take a look at it. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the multitasking. So this phone has excellent multitasking. It uses all the real estate of the 6.8-inch display, and it's peak brightness. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. But first, let's open up our stylus. And as you can hear, I have my good luck, good luck settings still on my stylus. It makes a sound every time I pull it out. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just look at our basic uh, settings for multitasking and see if there's any thing we need to change. Uh, so let's go with the multi window here. Under labs, it says multi-window for all apps. So everything will be able to be transformed to a multi-window wrap. That's cool. So let's just pull out a couple. And as you can see, I still have my good lock on here. So let's select photos. Okay, you can hold down on there and you can drop it. Open that back up. Oh, it's already there. Sorry. And hold it up here. There it is. Oops. Touch it and hold it down. And you can do either drag the open here, down here, a pop up view. But let's just do it right here first. And then you can select another app right here. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to select, I don't know, uh, Asphalt. So as you can see, it has a truncated version of Asphalt here. But you can look at pictures while you're playing the game. And this one looks like horizontal. And you can switch back and forth. All right, and then also you can select if you want to save this combination and you can add this pair to the home screen or the edge panel apps. So we're going to add that to the edge panel apps. 
So whenever you're on the home screen, you can go to the Edge Panel Apps. I'm gonna use my hand. <laughs> and then voila, here it is. And then you can launch it from this panel. And it shows up. Obviously you can stretch it out of the frame. So you can have a bigger screen for your video game here. Or you can stretch it this way to have a bigger picture for your photos. Pretty cool. Okay, and then there's another feature on the multitasking, which is called the drag here for the pop-up view. So let's say you're on Instagram, but you don't want to get rid of it. So now you have a floating window here. And you can make it smaller. You can minimize the window. You can make it transparent. Or you can just do it in the traditional split screen view. And you can pin this app to uh, the main menu. So let's do that. So now it's pinned. So no matter what, let's see. Now, if I go back to my edge panel here, launch that one, voila, you have three functioning apps overlapping each other. You can make that small so the icon is there. So at any point you're in the middle of your game and you're like, oh, and somebody says, check your Instagram. You can go, boom, right here, check your Instagram. And then there it is in all its glory. Or you can make it full screen. So you go back to your homepage, everything disappears. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. That was the multi window. Okay, next, next we're gonna talk about all the social media apps, the ones that I primarily use, and the ones that you may want to take a further look at. So let's look at Facebook, for instance, and how it looks on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. As you can see, it's big and bright. It's amazing. 120 hertz are working. Okay, and you can put this in night or dark mode. Uh, for Facebook, it's not set to match the phone. So you have to go into settings and you're going to have to go all the way down to preferences and then you're going to have to go to dark mode. You can do use system settings to get that started. Okay, and now it's functioning and now let's switch it back to dark mode and let's go back to Facebook. Voila, you have dark mode Facebook. Okay, see how it sounds on dark mode Facebook. Pretty nice. Very sharp. Excellent. That was Facebook. Okay, let's go into Instagram. So this is Instagram as we were earlier. This is what it's going to look like. Dark mode. Let's go into light mode. There we go. Okay. This is what it sounds like. Interesting video. Voila, that was Instagram. Okay, let's go to X. All right, so this is what it looks like. Okay, so this is in light mode. Now let's we'll switch it to dark. That's it in dark mode. It's pretty quick, pretty fluid. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. 
I don't know what this kid is doing, jumping across the uh, freeway. <laughs> oh, it's not real. It's AI. Oh, great. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what YouTube sounds like and looks. Okay. So is it dark mode already? This is what it looks like in light mode. Oops. And then once again, you're gonna have to, on YouTube, go to your settings. And then you're gonna have to go to general. And it's somewhere here. The oh, parents <laughs> uh, use device thing. Oh, so it was correct already. So let me put it in dark mode. Oh, there it is. That's dark. That's dark. All right. So YouTube doesn't know what dark and light mode is. So we're just going to do it ourselves. So light theme, light theme. Wow, that's super bright. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> he was in the Amazon with my mom. You can expand it. Right before she died. Oh my goodness. Full screen mode. Hey, come on, get your stuff. Let's go. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. That was YouTube. And I just like to pause and break and uh, shout out Caseborn. I do have a Caseborn uh, case on top of my S24 Ultra. So this one is the clear one with the uh, magnet, MagSafe charger uh, attached to it. And the cases do come with a screen protector, a glass screen protector. So it protects it full body. So I'd like to shout them out. You can pick those up on Amazon. And I have a video linked uh, right here where you can take a look at all of the cases they have to uh, offer. Pretty cool. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is the photos and videos. So I took a couple photos while I went to Austin. And here's take a look at the quality here. So, full screen. From a distance here, you can see the capital. Let's zoom in here. And almost see the lady up there, Lady Liberty. Here's an ultra zoom here. You see all the detail here. Here's a video. Oh. Pretty cool. That's nice sound. All right, let's see what we got here. More pictures here. Zoom right in on that building. And see there's a light on right there. Wow. And then it has this is a test of the dual recording. I'm using the ultra wide camera in downtown Austin. I'm walking to my car, but also enjoying the scenes. Pretty cool. This is this is a test of the dual recording on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. I got a picture in picture view. Once again, looking at the state capitol. And also have the self camera videotaping as well. Tell me what you think. Oh, tripped. 
Uh, that's my uh, clumsiness. Some more pictures here. Okay, and that's uh, pretty much it. So once again, this takes excellent photos and videos, so you'll never have any problem with that. In my experience, when I go into uh, parties or anything, I like to take pictures of my own with my camera. And as soon as I hand somebody my phone and they look into that screen, as soon as I launch, they're like, whose phone is, what kind of phone is this? Well, apparently Apple doesn't have such a good camera quality or it doesn't create you know, such a stir whenever somebody puts it in their hand. But from what I can tell, this one gets a lot of compliments. Okay, so let's go ahead and look into the camera. So there's a few uh, camera modes we got here. So we got portrait. So you got one, two, three times, five times zoom. Okay, and then you can do the full screen. I like the full screen to see everything on my phone, use all that real estate. Or you can do the one by one, or you can do the nine by 16, or you can do the three by four. Whatever you have, you can use it. And that's for a portrait. Okay, next one is the basic for photo mode. So you got 0.6, which is your ultra wide here. So directly looking down and I can see pretty much what my camera's videotaping. All right, pretty cool. I and mean, you got up to 10 times zoom and you can uh, use a little slider here. Go all the way in there to 100 times zoom. Pretty cool. And then you can go to 200 megapixels or 50 megapixels. And that goes up to 10 times zoom. And I can see the detail of this oil painting. Interesting. And then zoom out. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's go into video mode. So let's look at our options. So you can select super steady on, super steady off. I have it already prepped for 8K. And it's 30 frames per second. Or ultra HD for 60 frames or 30 frames per second. Full HD for full for 60, 30, and then high def. And this is space saving, low resolution. But we're not doing that. We're doing 8K with 30 frames per second. And then I like to do the full screen. And you can do up to... 10 times, 20 times zoom and AK. Let's go ahead and pull that out. And if I hit start, there's ultimately reality. Amazing. It's almost look like I have a magnifying glass on this table. Awesome. And this is what I recorded. Reality. Amazing. It's almost looked like I have a magnifying glass on this table. Awesome. And I sound great. <laughs> okay. And then it has dual record here. So you can see my studio and you can see it. Okay. You can do... Ultra HD, 30 frames per second, full HD. And then you can select uh, your camera in split view. Pretty cool. Split screen. Or you can do picture in picture. And then you see there is a four square button here. You touch that. And you can choose two lenses. You can choose the front. You can choose the ultra wide, which is the top camera. You can use the telephoto. Or you can use the wide. So let's say, for instance, we want to use the ultra wide and the wide. So we hit OK. 
So the ultra wide is in the picture in picture right here. And as you can see, I can spell the book from this distance, but here's the other camera and it's not capturing just as, as much, but let's do it this way. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Extra ultra wide and wide. Or you can do and switch to telephoto and then ultra wide. <laughs> oh, the telephoto is zoomed in. I can see the book pages. Let's look at this one. Oh, let's look at this. I can look at the painting full and I can go real deep into the grains of this painting at the same time. Awesome. All right, let's look at some other features here. So we have the expert raw version. We have the pro, pro video. Okay, we have night mode. Okay. Okay, then we go into food mode. So if you're a connoisseur of the culinary arts, you can take a picture of your food and it'll focus in on that area. And you can drag to move your focus. Pretty cool. You can uh, change the temperature of the picture. You can make it ultra bright light or ultra warm. And then you can change the three by four, nine by 16, one by one. Very social media friendly or full, like I like to keep it. Okay. And it has panorama, like pretty much all cameras, slow motion, hyperlapse. If you're trying to catch some really cool videos at night, you can select that. Portrait video. So you can do a portrait video. Maybe somebody you're interviewing. That would be cool. Or you can do single take. So single take, you take a picture and it does four or five different pictures. Let's say, for instance, I want to take a picture of this painting. So I'm holding it for 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, boom. All right, so I'll go into my gallery and I'll look at that. And this is single take and it's creating four shots. So let's go ahead and take a look. And raise the arrow. So it took the best picture, which is the king crown. It created a video, a boomerang clip that is. A crop shot, nice. And it shows the original video. So I'm holding it for 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, I'm for one, you probably wonder how I did that. That is uh, one of the new features here. So you're playing a video, so you can instantly it slow it down. Seconds, not eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And for instance, if you wanted to add the slow motion to that, you can essentially do it from the preview screen. You hold it down. Actually, let's go to the gallery. And then let's go to the gallery. And let me show you that cool feature I just mentioned. So while I'm preview, I'm going to hold it down. Oh, you have to be in edit mode. Of course, silly. So edit. <laughs> Here you go. Now you can adjust the speed.
So right in this block right here, you can adjust the speed. Is ultimately reality. Or you can make it even slower. Amazing. Or you can make it faster. It's ultimately reality. Amazing. So. Pretty cool. And those are all the photo and camera features on the phone. Okay, so we're getting ready to close. So to sum up, this is the Galaxy S24 Ultra. This is about one month later. I'm still pleased with this phone. Uh, according to others out there, the screen could be better. It could be more crisp. I do agree, but I saw, I look forward to the, um, updates that are coming up. I believe there's a huge one that's coming up in February, uh, the 22nd to address some of the complaints to the masses. So if you do have a complaints, please let Samsung know you're only making this phone better. You're only making it better for us in the Samsung community. And as a couple of YouTubers say, you know, the Samsung uh, fanboys unite. I am with you 100%. So we can keep this technology coming. Um, so overall, uh, the picture quality, all of the customizations, the settings, uh, the multitasking, the look on uh, the video, the AI features. I did a video about all the AI features, and I'll have that um you know, added as well. And the size, the feel, the brightness, the adaptability, and I even think the color choices are amazing. I couldn't decide for, you know, which one I wanted more. I wanted them all if I could, but I decided to get titanium orange just to be different. And because I'm a rattler, they went to Florida A&M University. So, you know, it's either orange or the green, but I let my wife get the green. She didn't know that it was a subtle, not subtle hint uh, to my alma mater here. Uh, so I suggest that you get this phone and get it at a good price um, because I believe this phone, along with seven years of updates, is going to be well worth it. And it's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. But let me know what you think. Like and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, give us a holler if you need anything. Message us directly. Let us know if you need us to clarify anything when it comes to this. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.